and welcome to Chopped Zucchini. Actually, it's in the kitchen with Mary Mac, but today's episode we're calling Chopped Zucchini because we had this kind of discussion. Um, the reason we're doing this episode is because we have more zucchini now than we had when we did the first episode about how much zucchini we had. So I was joking around and I said, I should do a whole dinner like they do on Chopped. Which we kind of did last time too. Which is what Anna reminded yeah. me of, that we actually did a whole dinner. We did an appetizer, a main course, and a dessert inadvertently. So this time we are actually focused on doing an appetizer, a main dish, and a dessert. All with zucchini as the main ingredient. Sort of like chopped. Actually, just exactly like chopped. Because what we're doing is an appetizer, which is called zucchini appetizer. Pretty clever, huh? <laughs> what? Grandma gave me the recipe. I said, what is this? And she goes, I call it zucchini appetizer. And I'm like... Very descriptive. That's what it is. The second thing... Uh, the main course is zucchini lasagna. This is pretty special, zucchini lasagna. Yeah, that's not something you hear about every day. No, rarely ever, unless you have way too much zucchini. I have, in fact, never heard of this <laughs> before right now. <laughs> and then <laughs> the last thing is a zucchini apple dabble cake. Now, this recipe, I got, oh, heavens, I want to say... 30 years ago at a farm market, I was at this farm market that, that was from an apple orchard, and they had all these recipes laying around, like buy things, you know? So I picked up this recipe for apple dabble cake, so I made it into a zucchini apple dabble cake, just to use the Does zucchini. Does it also have apples in it, or is it a zucchini dabble cake? It's going to have apple sauce in it. Oh. So... I don't know what the dabble is. Were they trying to rhyme and make it like apple dapple cake? Or is it dabble? It's dabble. Dabble. Huh. Yeah, I, um, no idea what that would <coughs> mean. If it means you're like dabbling. I'm dabbling with making a cake. <laughs> oh. So the first part is the zucchini appetizer. This is a very overcomplicated <laughs> recipe. <laughs> it just makes me laugh when I look at all the ingredients. It's hysterical. It has a lot of ingredients. However, it's very good. It's almost like a... Uh, how did you say that? It's almost like a bread. It's an odd thing because it uses a baking mix like this quick or whatever instead yeah. of flour. So this particular recipe calls for four eggs, slightly beaten, a half a cup of oil half teaspoon salt, a half teaspoon of dried basil. If you're using fresh basil, I'd use like a tablespoon of chopped fresh basil, um, two tablespoons of dried parsley, or a fourth cup of fresh chopped parsley, and a uh, half cup of onion minced. Pretty small. Works really, it, pretty small. Um, then you want one and a half cups of baking mix, and you can use Bisquick or Jiffy. Um, there's a lot of good organic brands out there of baking mixes. Bob's Mill makes one. Bob's Red Mill. So um, any kind of a baking mix. Uh, then you need a half a cup of grated Romano cheese. I don't believe in Parmesan cheese, so I like Romano. And that's what I say to use and what I say goes because it's my show. I believe we talked about this in one of the other episodes. Too. I want to make sure that I make a very strong point on okay, Romano we cheese. know that you hate Parmesan. We know that you hate Cool Whip. Yes. Any other things you hate? I don't know. I'll have to have a. I'll have to make a sign of all the things I hate. <laughs> food ingredients. So, what you do is you take all of these ingredients. This is not one of those mix this and this and this together. You take all of these ingredients and mix them together. Pretty easy. You can just throw them in the bowl as you go, actually. Um, the main thing is the, f the four eggs just need to be slightly beaten before you put them in. Mix all of this up. Um, you're going to get a 9 by 13 pan. Grease it and pour this mixture in. Smooth it out so it's nice and level. And you want to bake it at 350 for 25 to 35 minutes or until it's lightly browned on the top. And then you can serve this with a little cup of marinara sauce, heated. And you can, what's nice to do is either spoon the sauce, like cut your slice off, spoon a little bit on it, and eat it like that. Um, 
you can make a sort of cut it into longer, like a like breadstick a bread sort of a shape. Yeah. And this is this is actually it's it just tastes like an herbed bread. It's really good though. It's it's a really good thing. Um, I forgot to include the three cups of shredded zucchini into it though. That was good. <laughs> my gosh. What kind of a? I'm about to be fired for my own program. This is the main ingredient is zucchini. How did I forget to put that in? <laughs> it's because it's in the title. I skipped over it when I wrote it down. Three cups of zucchini, shredded fine. Shredded, so. Okay. Don't forget the zucchini that also goes into it. Doi. <laughs> You'd get kicked off a chopped if I'm, this was an episode. I'm telling you. I'd be up in front of them and go, they'd go, uh, you forgot the main ingredient, which was <laughs> zucchini. And then they'd all lean in and say, how did she forget the main ingredient, which is zucchini, in a dish that's titled zucchini appetizer? It's yeah. been done before on that show. I know. So. But they probably forgot the squid or something, you know. Okay, now that we have our recipe fixed with the proper zucchini additive, like we said, this is a really good little thing. It makes a, it makes a nice little herbed sort of a, a breadstick that you could serve with marinara sauce. Okay, and this is this is good. I'm not kidding. This is actually good. Next, we have zucchini lasagna. Now, on the last zucchini episode that we did, we have like we're gonna end up with ten zucchini episodes. No, I can see it now. Just a summer of zucchini episodes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last zucchini episode we did, we made zucchini rollatini, which I love to say. Zucchini <laughs> rollatini. So, um, when I we just d- thought of who you sound like when you say that. Rosanna, Rosanna, Dana. <laughs> zucchini rollatini. It does. The Roseanne comes out in me. Yeah. I love <laughs> Roseanne, Rosanna, Dana. Um, you're, we're going to use the same technique as we used on that. You're going to take a, a thinner zucchini, so we'll have um, less seeds in it. Clean it really well, cut each end off, and then slice it into narrow strips. Um, and then, uh, if you remember what we did, we put foil. We uh, took a foil-lined baking sheet, spritzed it with olive oil, and then we laid the zucchini strips out on that and spritzed them with olive oil again and put them in the oven at 350 for, it wasn't very long, maybe 10 minutes, I think. Yeah. And um, just enough to soften them up a little bit. And then we took them out and cooled them. So for the zucchini lasagna, we're going to need about 15 strips of zucchini cut like that. Um, and I'm guessing that you're probably going to need three zucchini. You should be able to get five usable strips out of each one. So that'll get rid of three zucchini for you. <laughs> uh, we've gotten rid of two zucchini. We've got, let's see, this will be three. That'll be five. We've gotten rid of about five zucchini, so we're doing good so far. If you don't let them get too big. I have a zucchini here that's the size of a small dog. So it's a big zucchini. Yeah. Um, it's even got legs. So we prep, we're going to prep those zucchini strips first so they have time to cool. While those are cooling, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to teach you the secrets of making a real Italian lasagna that is not made with zucchini noodles. But this is the cheese part of the lasagna. Is this the Aunt Rachel approved lasagna? Yes, this is the non-American way of making well, she lasagna. Said, she says the non-white people way, but she's white, <laughs> so I, I don't understand she told me, that form of racism. She told me, <laughs> don't do it the way the Americans do. That's what she told me. Don't do it the way the Americans do. And I said, well, you're an American. And she goes, you know what I mean. Well, then she goes, <laughs> it was adorable. you know what I mean? Those white heads or something. <laughs> <laughs> she's adorable. Oh, but anyway, so this is funny. the real... Italian way of making the cheese filling for your lasagna. The secret is dry ricotta. Uh, Dry ricotta generally comes in a loaf and it is generally found in either your deli or your specialty cheese section of the grocery store. And most stores sell this because it's the sort of thing that a small dairy would make locally. So almost everywhere I've ever been has it, but a lot of people don't know about it because it's the Italian secret, okay? So you want a loaf of dry ricotta, and you're going to want that to be one and a half to two pounds of dry ricotta, 
And um, that's a lot of cheese. It seems like it, but it isn't. Because you're making a lasagna, so it's going to be layered up in it. Yeah. And also, uh, ricotta is really good. Dry ricotta is really good, so you're going to find yourself eating it. I mean, you can just slice this off and eat it. It's delicious. The ricotta that comes in a container that's very wet, you don't want to eat that. It's, it's like cottage cheese, and it doesn't produce as good of a lasagna. So if you already make lasagna and I've insulted you, I apologize in advance. <laughs> but it is our way. <laughs> Insult um, people, tell them the Italian way of cooking. Yes, that is our way. That is our way. So you're going to need uh, one and a half to two pounds of dry ricotta. Um, you need one pound of shredded provolone cheese. I don't like mozzarella either. I mean, I'll use mozzarella, okay? I don't despise it like I do Parmesan cheese. However, I don't like it as well as uh, provolone, and provolone works much better um, and you also want sure. one cup of grated Romano cheese. We all know how I feel about that. And um, those are your three cheeses there. And you're going to take those cheeses and break them up and mix them together with your fingers, not a spoon. You've got to feel it. you got to feel the food. Mix them up. And then to that, that's already mixed up that cheese, you're going to add a fourth teaspoon of granulated garlic, half teaspoon of dried basil, a dash of salt, and a dash of pepper. Mix it up a little bit more, and then you're going to add two eggs to that and mix those eggs in real well. This part you can use a spoon. I allow. Okay? So <laughs> yeah, mix that up. Yeah, I don't want to mix that up. Okay, so you hands. have that all mixed up. And then you're going to have a nice sauce to use with this. Um, I am not opposed to jarred sauces because they're very good anymore. So mm -hmm. get your favorite jarred pasta sauce that you love. Uh, there's a few brands that I love a lot. Prego I love a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Prego Traditional that doesn't have anything else in it is very good. Uh, there's a brand called Mids, which is made in... Um, the Akron area from a restaurant over there. It's a very good sauce. So there's a few sauces around that I'm sure people like, but just get the one you like the best. So now you're going to get a zucchini pan. A zucchini pan is a foil pan that you can throw away when you're done with your zucchini. This is the most brilliant invention ever invented anywhere because it's very hard to wash a pan that's had lasagna put in it. That's very true. So if you can get the disposable foil lasagna pan and you're gonna take uh you can grease it or wipe it with olive oil coat the inside of your pan um then you're gonna lay four or five strips of zucchini down on the bottom of your pan oh wait no stop <laughs> after you oil it boy i'm having a heck of a time with my order after you oil it you're gonna coat the bottom of the pan with your pasta sauce then you're gonna lay down four or five pieces of zucchini strips on top of the zucchini strips, you're going to crumble uh, half of your cheese mixture. So, because we're going to get two layers out of this. So you're going to half of your ricotta cheese mixture, crumble that all over the top of the uh, zucchini strips that you've laid down. Cover that with sauce. Five strips of zucchini on top of that. That's your noodles again. Another layer of ricotta on top of that sauce another layer of the zucchini and that's your top and you and I always like to take when you put that top layer if you're using lasagna noodles same thing gently press that with your hands to make sure that everything is you know smushed, smushed down. down a little bit now it's kind of funny I just realized this is unintentionally gluten-free and vegetarian. Yes. It's not vegan because you got the cheese. Because of the cheese, yes. But. Yes, it mm. is gluten-free and it is vegetarian. Then on top, you're going to put more sauce, okay? And then you can sprinkle, if you want to sprinkle a little Romano on the top, if you want to put some shredded provolone on the top, shredded mozzarella, whatever. You can put more cheese on the top. Then you're going to bake this. And you're going to want to bake this for about 40 minutes at 350 degrees, okay? You'll know it's done when you can take a, a reasonably, you know, like a paring knife or something and very carefully 
gently press on the zucchini and the knife goes through. You don't want to press too much because it'll go right through the bottom of that pan. <laughs> so be thinking when you're doing this step. Um, but you're going to just take your knife and press right down into it. And that's how you can tell if it's done. And when you get it out of the oven, you want to let this sit for about 15 minutes before you cut it because you want to let it cool enough that it really um, solidifies together. And you slice that and you've got your delicious zucchini lasagna. You have now used up five zucchini. We are now going to use up two more zucchini. In the <laughs> <laughs> two more zucchini in the dessert. This dessert is the, of course, zucchini apple dabble cake. And this is actually a really good cake. It doesn't have an icing, but it has this topping. Um, and I'd just like to say before I start, I made this cake wrong for about 20 years <laughs> because I, I, <laughs> I was reading the recipe and I inadvertently thought the word boil was the word broil. That is a so big as I difference. go through this recipe, remember my mistake. And then one day I was looking at the recipe card and I went, oh my gosh, it says boil. <laughs> so I had been making it wrong for about 20 years, but we actually liked it broiled, so we <laughs> which is really hysterical. But we liked it broiled, so. There's two ways to do this. You can either do it the wrong way and broil it or the right way and have sort of a caramel topping on it. Uh, I'll tell you both ways, but in the recipe card, you're only going to get the correct way. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, this particular cake calls for one and a half cups of sugar, a half a cup of canola oil, a half a cup of applesauce, three eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla, three cups of flour, just regular flour, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking soda, two teaspoons of cinnamon, and four cups of peeled, seeded, and chopped zucchini. So what you're going to do with your zucchini is take it and cut it in half, scoop all the seeds out, strip that outer skin off, and cut it into little chunks as though it were little chunks of apple, okay? Not little slices, but chunks so that there's kind of a you know, you can kind of see it. Like about a centimeter cube or yeah. smaller? Half inch, half inch centimeter is good. Um, and this is another one of those lovely, fabulous cakes where you just throw all the ingredients together and mix it up. Okay, so you stir all this up and you pour the ingredients mixed into a greased 9 by 13 pan. And you're going to bake at 350 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes. And this cake gets a real nice brown finish on it when it's done. Uh, you can test it with a toothpick like a normal cake or push down the middle with your finger and see. So 30 to 40 minutes, it should be done. Now, in the meantime, while your cake is baking, you're going to combine one cup of brown sugar, a fourth cup of cream. It can be heavy cream, whipping cream, or half and half. And one stick of butter. Now, um, you put that in a pan and you're gonna put it on the stove, melt the butter, mix it all up, melt it, and you're gonna bring that to a boil for four minutes and that makes almost like caramel, okay? When your cake is done, you're going to take that <coughs> mixture, that caramel mixture, when your cake is done out of the oven, pull it out of the oven, you're gonna pour that caramel over the top of it and then put it back into the oven for about five minutes. Now the incorrect way to do it, which is also very delicious, is you take a cup of brown sugar, a fourth cup of cream, and a stick of butter and put them into a saucepan and just melt them, okay? So it's actually just liquid, but it's not thick. It's melted butter with brown sugar dissolved into it and cream mixed in it, and it's very runny. So when your cake is done, you're going to pour your runny mixture over the top of it. It's going to suck all down into the cake, and you're going to put it under the broiler for about five minutes. <laughs> and what this does, <laughs> what this does is this liquidy sweetness gets down into the cake, and then when you broil it, it gets this strange texture on the top. I can't describe it, but it's quite delicious. <laughs> The wrong way actually is very good, um, but that is it. Then you're going to take your cake out and let it cool completely and 
cut it up and eat it, and it is very delicious. So that's our episode of Chopped Zucchini. <laughs> I hope I win the prize, which well, is... Well, you were the only contestant. I so. was the only contestant, so therefore the judges must pick me. Or they must chop you. Or they must chop me. This could be a Judge John Hodgman episode. Should they pick me or chop me? <laughs> John Hodgman would chop me, I'm fairly certain. So, because I botched the very first recipe by forgetting to put the zucchini in. Yeah. He would chop me right out. Boom. First round eliminated. <laughs> I could hear him saying, sorry, solo contestant, you have been chopped. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Gosh. Well, I hope you enjoy this second zucchini episode or the it's still zucchini time episode or the chopped zucchini episode whichever one of those titles you prefer zucchini two out of possibly a thousand (laughs) (laughs) Uh, let me know if you try something and we will again um as we said before we're getting recipe cards together to put on our website that you can print out save store have tattooed on your calf Whatever you want to do. I mean, they are pretty nice. They are. I can't really recommend nice. getting one tattooed. Well, if it was a recipe you really, really liked, a calf wouldn't be the right place. Forearm, because you'd want to be able to read it when you're making it. Yes. Right? Just look at that yes. forearm. Or like on your belly upside down. Your belly upside so down. Can reference. Hey, that's good. Or on top of your thighs. Perfect! <laughs> 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 well... <laughs> Have that on one side and a zucchini size chart on the other. There you go. Zucchini size chart. We should make a zucchini size chart. This zucchini is right out. <laughs> we actually have the zucchini that would be right out in our possession it is actually currently. actually the size of a thigh. <laughs> so that do- would be a big tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Well, thanks for listening if you did. And if you didn't, too bad for you.